Welcome to another episode of Joe's Java Jive. Oh, we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. We're gonna talk about Marissa and Hill People Comedy. So get your Sasquatch ready and get ready to laugh. Cause it's about to come and be. We got a morning coffee, we got a conversation, all we need is you. Hello and welcome, Marissa. How are you today? I'm great. I've got my cup of coffee, so I'm prepared to be on the Java Jive. Yes. Cheers to you, my friend. Cheers. Ah, good morning. So how are you doing today, Marissa? Welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you so much for having me. That was a beautiful intro. Wow. Every, every episode, I try to do something random with whatever instrument is calling me that day. Yeah. Today, the organ, getting excited for your show. So tell the folks uh, a little bit about yourself and what you have coming up that I'm really excited about. Great. Well, I'm Marissa Caruso. I actually grew up in Hudson Valley and then went to Western New York for about a decade going to school and living in Buffalo, New York, where I studied and then did theater, a lot of acting, but then also got into more of the production side of thing, managing a theater company called Torn Space. And then during the pandemic, I ended up making a big life change and moving to the Catskills, um, still in New York State, but very different uh, community in this rural area. And um, I love it here. It's a really cool place when it's beautiful, of course. And then there's all these kind of interesting, creative people who are tucked into the valleys and the hills here so I really feel like I've met a ton of amazing folks and then I started to produce events Um, and actually the first event that I produced in 2021 was the Hill People's Comedy Fest and uh, the Hill People's Comedy Fest was probably it was probably a bit of a grandiose term for what was a comedy show then but um basically the end of June, early July-ish, sort of early summer. We get a bunch of comedians. Um, I like to mix up local and um, visiting comedians to come up and do um, do their thing for our local community because there's really not a ton of uh, entertainment options up in them there hills. So yes. the first... Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm blabbering a bit, but <laughs> no, that's beautiful. I just that is. I just want to tell the folks it's one of the coolest events ever, and I love just that intro. It I re- resonate a lot with it, and I know exactly uh, what what that feeling is like. Wanting to bring some joy and entertainment and something to look forward to to your area, and you brought a lot of energy when I got, was able to see it. So you're the people up there, I'm sure are very thank you. So thank you on behalf of all of the, the amazing, happy folks who come to attend this event. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. We had a, a cool little venue that was very affordable. I mean, for me, I didn't pay anything for that venue. So <laughs> very affordable for me. My friend was renting it for a meager hundred dollars a month, which is impossible anywhere else. So in these sort of small areas where it seems like not a lot is going on, what we do have is some space and resources if somebody has the energy to, to produce it, which I don't, I don't know if it's probably a little harder where you, where you are in New Paltz and Hudson Valley, which is getting more and more 
populated. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because lately I've been feeling like there's this explosion of energy happening. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. want to see comedy. They want to have these events. So it's been interesting that this year, 2024, I don't know if there's been a shift for you, but it feels like the universe is ready to accept it. Yeah, it's really interesting. So yeah, I did the first event in 2021. Of course, there wasn't much going on then at all. We had this beautiful little window of that, whatever, three or four weeks before the Delta variant. Virgins. Yeah, variant. Thank you. Um, where everybody was like, maybe it's over. And that's when Hill People's Comedy was, which was, you know, a one day event. Um, but it was just really joyful. So I knew I wanted to keep doing it. Um, the second year was pretty similar, but then last year we expanded to two days. And um, anytime you grow a project that requires an audience or requires a certain amount of participation for it to be successful, you get a little nervous, whether you're outgrowing your, um, your crowd, you know, if you're moving too fast or don't have the people to support it, but it, it went great. And it was so awesome to to meet you and have been stancery and have you all up. And uh, we had um, we had basically a stand up night and then an alternative comedy night. My love is more in the improv sketch world, or that's where my experience is. I love stand up, but I knew you're I very to... gifted at sketch. <laughs> I love oh, Gimlick. So Thanks. Gimlick is another, uh, you know, part of you that I'm really excited to talk about today because you're such a unique comedy group that I've loved to see beyond. I, I'm a groupie. I followed you guys to a serious comedy theater. When if you're anywhere near me, I'm going to see it because the three of you together and uh, the sketches you create, it's so full of energy. And as someone who's used to the improv, it was like, oh my God, this is what it looks like when you really, you know, polish something up and put a lot of energy into it and, and rehearsing and making sure the beats are there. And it, bravo, because chef's kiss to you guys in the comedy world. That was really well done. And and what is Gimlick and, and how did that start? Yeah, so um, Gimlick's a three-woman sketch group i am one of the three it features irene rising and kate armstrong alongside me and our history is very much linked to hill people i mean we met back in 2011 ish um as college students in western new york they're from rochester and uh, we all went to suny fredonia go suny uh <laughs> and, yeah right <laughs> And we were on the, the college improv team, which is called Random X, and it still exists. Um, actually, um, I'll get back to that in a bit, a minute, but um, we stayed in touch. We, we weren't really, I didn't see them for, I graduated in 2013. I hadn't seen them for maybe five years or something before. I knew I was in this new area and I didn't know too many performers, certainly not comedians. Um, and they were living in New York. So I was like, Hey, would you be interested in just coming up for a weekend and <laughs> doing some improv with me? Because, um, you know, those, those original relationships, maybe you've experienced that, that too. And you're in, in college or in a setting where you're learning something together with people and especially improv where you get really close and silly and it's so much fun I feel like those bonds are some of the strongest that you ever have mm -hmm. as a performer and as a comedian so like they're just lifelong friends and I knew I could just ask them and if they were busy whatever they wouldn't come but if they weren't I figured they probably would, and they did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody wants to come up to the hills and, and get some trees. So when you're in New York all the time, you need exactly. it. Especially if you're living in New York City. So, so yeah, they came up, and we did our first improv set as a trio. And um, we did, like, one rehearsal on Zoom beforehand, um, and Irene came up with this character called Gimlick, who was sort of a, a servant character in this 
world. It was a scary <laughs> story. There was a witch. We we wish we'd recorded it. But <laughs> oh, well, this is documenting it now because I never heard this mythology of <laughs> yes. the servant. Gimlick, get over here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It was that kind of dynamic. I was the witch and, and uh, Irene was Gimlick. And um, because we knew that the improv set, we wanted to t do some sort of a, a legend playing on the cat skills. Um, I, the Catskills history of the Rip Van Winkle, like these kinds of spooky stories that happen in the hills. So we're like, oh, we're going to make up a legend of blank. So Gimlick appeared in that first story and we just liked the name, loved the character and decided to adopt it as our title. Aww. And um, thus the sketch, well, yes, yeah, so we started doing improv again, but then um, they then we thought we wanted to start writing stuff and um really we've been writing for about a year and a half it's not even that long but we're all in theater so um we all uh feel like we are comfortable with the written word <laughs> yeah you are you are i mean you guys remember everything and and getting to see you do like a full set uh at serious comedy was really cool too because yeah you just you guys were really so high energy the whole time and then you remember all of these little moments that you're very all three such gifted actors and so funny oh my god i'm I, me and serena were dying of laughter and it was oh. it's just always fun to see you Thank you so much likewise and I'm always amazed by all the stuff that you jam into your schedule with all the many like this outlet <laughs> i know and you're really yeah dynamic and, and it's really cool to oh, it, thank you but what i was getting getting to eventually um is yes so last year we expanded to two days and this year we're expanding to three days i feel like i never saw any comedy events until the last six months or something i, I don't know it's like they're exploding now there's comedy um, right up the hill and there was actually comedy happening at the bell this spring which is why we're partnering with them this year um, yeah, so that, that was um, cool uh, yeah. you had andrew steiner i'm hoping to have him on the show here oh, soon great. he was and, a new puzzle too right i i don't know if i i didn't know him from anything besides seeing him at the belvedere uh, you know in your post and just seeing everything that you guys put together but it's pretty ambitious to say we're going to do three days of comedy. Like that's mm -hmm. Woodstock of comedy happening. <laughs> and it's and it's so cool to me, a comedy festival like this. It just was such a nice energy up there too. like the, the trek in. It felt really, really good and welcoming. It was so nice to meet you and buy a Hill People comedy tote. Yeah. folks you got to get one if you're there in person and i <laughs> uh, know this uh this will hopefully be listened to for years to come so if you're not here this year come in 2025 mm -hmm. because this thing isn't going anywhere yeah. but it's really cool and you have the uh the this transition into sketch you know for for the three of you was that new for you or, or you mentioned the torn theater tell us so what, yeah. what was that about too Torn space is like a totally different world. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I have multiple personalities. <laughs> um, Torn space is a uh, an avant-garde uh, contemporary performance weird theater company <laughs> in Buffalo, New York. I like it. Um, Alrighty. Yes. <laughs> so if you're looking for something baffling but beautiful. Go to Torn Space. <laughs> the best <laughs> advertisement. Um, no, they're really they're really a great company, and I um, actually amazingly, this is I still work for them, um, doing admin and um, marketing stuff, and this will be ten years that I have been involved with that company. I started as a wow. volunteer. They do these wild site specific performances. Um, if you ever go to Buffalo. I do. Yeah, My do. sister's in Niagara, so I go up there, oh, cool. you know, a bit. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Silo City? I have not. I haven't explored it as much as I want to. Silo City. 
yeah. So I would highly recommend you go to the Bar Duende at Silo City. Silo, the Buffalo um, has all these grain silos from uh, left over from when the Erie Canal was, you know, a viable <laughs> commercial endeavor. Because um, they would ship all the grain from the middle, the middle of the country across the Great Lakes, get it on the Erie Canal, bring it to the Hudson and boom get it to international markets mm. so it's the largest collect the grain elevators there they were actually invented in buffalo and there's the largest collection of them wow. in downtown buffalo and it's this really weird otherworldly kind of industrial landscape um with these towering 200 foot tall cylinders concrete cylinders and torn space started doing performances there back in 2013 um, with this kind of mythological society. Um, oh my God, I'm in. It, it's, <laughs> it is elaborate and uh, very cool. <laughs> There's the mythos again, you know, of like creating mm -hmm. this culture. It, it's such a beautiful way to approach it of like, and, and I kind of do that with happenstancery, a, a ritual around it where it's like, we meet up at this time and we do this thing and, this is if it's your first time, you're going to introduce yourself with us this way. And it, you know, it sounds, uh, some people are like, all right, I'm not joining your crazy cult, but yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a way to kind of get people into this unique vibe every time. And that sounds so cool. And it, I can see how that inspired you to go on to do the Gimlik myth, <laughs> the mythos. <laughs> yeah, it is cool to kind of create these little um worlds the parallel universes they give you they give you an aesthetic they give you uh, plenty of content to play with i mean we gimlick is um is a, the total flip-flop of anything Tor torn space is very serious and yeah, i feel like okay. <laughs> <laughs> serious. Um, but, and, I, and i you know come from i end up doing a lot of comedic characters when I'm cast in plays and um and I have this improv love in background so I feel like I had to have this comedy second life yeah. <laughs> as oh. a as an outlet or as a I don't know it's more yeah it is like a, a second life and and these days in in this world you know it all you have to feed it like like a fifth limb like if you really want to be an artist or a comedian or something, it, it does take like weekly dedication and you have to be a producer like you're doing and, and mm. build, build the places for yourself to, to show up, which is really cool how you've done that. Yeah. Likewise. It is, it would be great if people just hired us to do what we love to do. Right. But often we have to create our own opportunities <laughs> Yeah, at first especially you know and, first, exactly. and i speaking of that and and you know i do want to i i'm i'm curious before we go back a little more on this torn space because i feel like we created this scene of <laughs> us standing underneath this uh, this amazing industrial give me just a little more of a picture of that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on what happens next you know is it, okay. is it the root of it well, it's interesting you said the word ritual because Torn Space, some of their leading kind of uh, ethos, whatever, uh, their mi mission, vision, um, their thesis statement maybe, <laughs> is yeah. exploring community ritual as mm. performance, um, community gatherings. So they create these gathering spaces for people to... Um, to explore it, it it does get into cult language pretty quickly <laughs> but it's like an artistic cult or something and um, they they choose a theme each year that they're exploring whether it be like the um the scariest one that people people still talk about this show all the time from 2015 um called they kill things and it, that that show was all about violence Mm. Um, violence and humanity, violence towards uh, the other creatures and each other. It was wow. really like frightening. <laughs> um, also, people got really rowdy, and there ended up being a lawsuit. Anyway, it was yeah, it was like a wild, and it really like conjures these crazy emotions and behaviors in people when you 
have a sort of ritual, an intention uh, to a performance like that. Um, and they've created these archetypal ca characters that are really created, filled by certain company members, and then they end when those company members leave. So the it gets meta also. <laughs> wow. I mean, the same group of actors pretty much comes back every year, and, and we kind of call it um, like a summer camp. <laughs> yeah. Because it's very, even just being in rehearsal day after day in this strange landscape, you're in the middle of the city, but it doesn't feel like a city because you're surrounded by these strange structures. But then also there are portions of the land, large portions of the land that, have, that are returning to nature and they've um, hired a landscape ecologist maybe uh, eight years ago or something like that, seven, mm. maybe seven years ago or something, who's been working with the land and um, turning these kind of scrubby landscapes into beautiful native plant areas. There's this oh. huge cottonwood tree in a field. Um, oh. There are these cool trails. Um, I like really, it. <laughs> it's really, it's really bizarre, and hard to describe. But anyways, people come back every year, and sadly, there there are these characters like um, a healer character. Um, there's the king of feast. Um, there, there's like a sage like character, and then, <clears throat> um, and then there's the society, which is most of the company that shows up every year who are in this parallel society that I was mentioning. Yeah. Um, but actually when some, we've sadly lost a few people, um, people have passed away since this mythology came. I mean, 10 years, 11 years later now, people's lives change. They move, they pass away. So our healer character who also did a lot of voice over and became kind of this host um, the go, it, it, we still have all these voice recordings for her and, and still we use them, which I'm like, when do we stop? Um, yeah, never. <laughs> I don't know. It becomes very strange. She wow. passed away in, in 2019 and it was a huge loss. This beautiful woman named Diane Gadry. Um, and, but she's like still with us and through these, through these rituals where her voice just will appear every so often um, mm. with these sort of beautiful quotes or dialogue. That's a sweet um, tribute at, to someone who, who was instrumental and yeah. Wow. That's, this sounds like something that's really like, you know, hitting the top echelon of, you know, creating something deeper than just a show, but really a, a community and an experience that is very unique and, I love so many things about it. The the year theme, the the setting, the you know, the way you describe the working with the landscape. That's this is a really interesting stuff. I'm I'm glad to to hear your involvement with it. And you went through this summer camp a couple of times. Um, well, I since I first volunteered in, in 2014 as a, a guide, some of them ten, are walking. ten years ago. 10 years. I haven't missed one. So wow. if, if you're ever in Buffalo in August, um, probably like the second, it's usually two weekends, either the first two or maybe the middle two, um, check out Torn Space and they're probably doing their silo show. So it's, um, it's a real experience. And um, I plan on being there again this year. <laughs> and you help with the socials. Where, where can folks find those? You know, oh, torn. sure. Um, at Torn Space, T-O-R-N-S-P-A-C-E. Awesome. Very cool. And that's that's one chapter there of of what you what an amazing thing you've gotten involved in. You know, life is throws these things at us that you're meant to find. And I think that that was meant to pair with you and inspire mm -hmm. you, you know. Yeah, it's really a very unique organization um, that's doing something 
unlike anybody else in the region, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's two two things that remind me of. I don't know if you've ever saw the movie like Schenectady, New York, or like yeah. Schenectady, New York. It was Philip Seymour Hoffman, and it's this massive movie that is like all about how art imitates life and life imitates Ooh. art. And it becomes like they create a whole replica of a city of New York city inside of like a dome, like, and someone's playing, you know, the screenwriter and someone's playing a very meta huge movie that as artists, you can really relate to it. Cause it's like the never ending uh, f film and, and it wow. goes on and on for years and years so check that out. And then it also, the that person who speaks out and, and uh, sorry for your loss of the healer character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just love that. It really, it almost reminds me of, uh, you know, this is a very, I didn't even want to share it, but Derek Jeter, he used to, he really loved the way his announcer who passed on said mm. his name. Yeah. So when you go to Yankee Stadium and Derek Jeter was playing, every time they they wouldn't have the new announcer do it, they would have this old recording that goes, number two, Derek Jeter. Wow. And it was like, oh, that's what? interesting. Yeah, and they just kept it going after that person had passed on, and, and it, would, it was the, always the clip for that moment. So uh, that was coming into mind as you told that. That's yeah. really interesting. A person's voice is so unique to them. Um, and I even know. a person's voice over time changes so much. And, it really it's eerie how we can recall conjure that person through those those voice clips who knows someday our loved ones may be conjuring us up by listening to this podcast and hey. saying let me hear a little story <laughs> of who is joe who is marissa what's what's going on and it's a very cool thing that we can capture a moment in time with our voice you know and share that preserve that forever so i, I think it's, it's a big reason why I love doing this podcast is thinking about capturing a vault of what's going on for years to come. And, and you are someone when I, when I told uh, Serena, I was having you on, she said, this is one I really got to listen to because I just am so in, inspired and you are really talented. And I love what you're doing this year with the Hill people. This, this year feels different. And I'm really excited about what we have going on on the 20th on thursday yes. is this the first workshop of stand-up yes um so i've thought for a for the past couple of years i've tried to incorporate an open mic into the weekend because it's great to have people from the community come up and uh you know share their take on the world and you want to you want to kind of hear from people but there's not uh, there's not an open mic community in this area. Um, you know, a lot of places like, of course, New York, uh, uh, but also Buffalo. A lot of communities where there's a comedy scene, there will be open mics several times a week. I mean, in New York, there's certainly one every night of the week or multiple. You can go and work on material, polish uh, a set, and then then you're ready to do a show eventually a, a feature there's not really a culture for that here so every time I would try to open the mic and see if anybody would pop up on stage it was crickets um, the, first, <laughs> <laughs> the first year the comics in the show just went up and did extra material which was actually fun because it was stuff that they were working on it was a little rougher um, and was just some bonus or they were riffing and it was very casual um, so then I thought, well, maybe it's something that needs a little feeding, a little uh, sourcing, I guess. Mm. Um, and so I thought maybe a workshop, maybe some some ser a series to kind of feed that lineup with locals who who are interested in doing stand up but don't quite know where to start or need some structure to to build up to it. So I thought we can do some workshops. And I mentioned this to a comic who was here a few months ago at the bell, Mia Jackson. And she said, Oh, I used to teach. I've taught in stand up workshops before I would do that. And I was really surprised because I hadn't thought 
she's she's a really successful comedian. She's touring the country. She's uh, doing well in her career. She's on TV, writing for TV. I was like, oh, you would, you'd want to do that? She said, yeah, she's an amazing person. So easy to work with and organized. Um, so we started setting up, put out the feelers, tried to get some people to sign up. We got, we had 10 slots and we filled them all. Um, and we said four sessions, these four dates leading right up to the festival. And then you, your showcase is actually the Thursday night show of the festival weekend. And, you know, as a bonus, Mia will perform herself also, um, which just gives people an opportunity to be part of a part of an, a kind of an open mic setting, but also it's more refined because people are working on this material for a whole a whole month at least. And you were also welcome to bring material you were already developing. Um, and then also be on stage with a really professional comedian who also happens to be your teacher. And yeah. she's doing these one-on-one coachings with people the week of um i I hope you've experienced this i i was sending her my material and she's got great notes awesome insight um and really you refine those jokes um before getting on stage so i'm really excited too (laughs) oh it's so cool she's super talented and mia is so funny and just like really sweet of her to dedicate her time to this and at such a really reasonable cost and, and so, so reasonable. I've found a lot from this course already. Um, just this week or just last night from when we're recording this, I, I did my five minutes at a bar open mic in New Paltz, Great. actually. Great. I ended up, yeah, I ended up doing like 10, you know, 10 or 15 and and, and doing some improv and, and feeling the room. But it was so cool and so I very different for me. Oh, Oh no, connection. Is that me? Hmm. I'm going to go closer to my router just in case. Momentary technical difficulties. Guessing it's not on my end, so I'll go back to my desk. (laughs) Oh, thank God. Oh, no. I'm back. You're back. Yay. Okay, I'm going to pick it up right where I left off. So, yeah, I did this set at a Snugs Comedy where we're going to be doing a comedy show on the 25th, a Tuesday, late night. And it was really fun. And and I just I've never thought about the stand up this way. Like for me, I usually do it in the spur of the moment. And I've been trying to just do something new every time. And I've been really resistant to carving out your set. And this practice has been, it's really opened my eyes to this is the way to really get a set you're proud of that you know is going to work. This is the way to do it. And it's, I'm so thankful to you and Mia for bringing that together. Cool. I'm so glad you were able to join and uh, interested in joining. Um, yeah, it is a different way about of going about comedy, but then you realize if you do have something solid and reliable, you can always jump off off from there with your improv skills um and <clears throat> as we know the the joy and the pain of improv is it can go it can be the greatest success and it can flop <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for sure we've all been there so um so if you do have some reliable jokes and your improv is not getting the best response yeah. <laughs> you can you can fall back on your material <laughs> exactly it was so fun to start with my opening and then riff and do some material about the room and stuff that's coming to me in the moment and then thinking in my head where where do i pick back up oh yeah that joke and that'll get me set and finish strong so it was so fun and and this is really helping me grow and, and call myself a comedian 
this year I'm trying to do 27 sets of stand up throughout my 27th year on earth. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of, you know, just how many years we've been around, I was looking at you and right now and seeing your smile and thinking, I wonder what Marissa was like as a kid. Yeah. Were you always so funny and, and uh, you know, making your friends and family laugh? You know, I was actually pretty shy as a kid. <clears throat> and I think theater really helped me, give me per- gave me permission to step out of my shyness and speak yeah Um, and having a character protects your sensitive little ego um so true so So many people need that yeah i kind of needed to test out some personalities i felt like um certainly i felt like um came into more comedy around 13 14 um doing yeah really doing like comedic characters I don't know if I ever saw myself as a very funny person before then um yeah. I'm sure a couple of your friends behind closed doors you know got to see the the real you as it comes out and you know with with be growing up it yeah I agree with you it's testing out different personalities mm-hmm. and finding it and there's always that moment when you realize in the improv setting or in the theater setting, when you're on a stage and the lights are on and you can really create, it's so much fun. And and Mm -hmm. that's, it's great to have kids open up in that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. I love um, teaching improv and theater classes to kids. I mean, not all kids are receptive to it, which makes a difference. But um, if it's if it's not a forced atmosphere and it's something that the kids sign up for, they're really amazing. Um, it's so true. And fun fact: this this shirt I'm actually wearing right now is a, is actually a new children's musical that I directed right uh, in 2019 or 20 actually 2020. Right on March 13th, 14th, 15th was supposed to be our show, and we we got to do one dress rehearsal with parents and we filmed it because i was like there's no way we're gonna do any other the world's about to change and yeah i was directing 62 kids in a play whoa (laughs) oh my goodness by yourself i'm pretty much a couple of parents helping out in the you know in the back sometimes feeding snacks in the beginning and stuff but i was keeping their attention and choreographing and it was so much fun and, and really gave me this confidence to, to work with kids and to be a teacher. And now I'm doing some more mindfulness intro to improv where it's just a few kids who want to be there and do doing that right now. It's stellar yoga and trying to slow down because I know this world is so fast paced and mm. I'm, I want to intro improv in a way that's slow and steady. Mm, beautiful. That's admirable. 60 kids. My goodness. I've never worked with that many. (laughs) I can deal with 10. (laughs) Oh yeah. And everybody got a part, you know, this was like a video game spoof play that, that every, whatever I said, what do you really want to be? And kind of wrote them apart for what, if, if it wasn't in there, I put it in there. Wow. It was really fun. Yeah. And growing up, you found your your outlets, you know, what was it that kind of, was there a moment where you said, I, I want to do this kind of stuff in my life? I want to be a comedian or an actor? Well, um, it might have been the first school musical, which was Schoolhouse Rock Live Junior. Uh. <laughs> And I remember very clearly, um, I played, I sang, I'm just a Bill. (laughs) Classic. It was me and two other girls who were uh, wearing these very embarrassing costumes. (laughs) Typical typical middle school costume situation with it. It was basically a mattress pad that had a hole that we stuck our heads out (laughs) of. I and can then see it. Writing like we the people or something. And, <laughs> and we were in the cafetorium on opening night and our 
our our main curtain didn't work, so a kid would have to um, pull pull the curtain open and close. <laughs> so funny. And I just remember the kid pulled the curtain open, and the whole audience saw us in these mattress pad costumes and just laughed. Died of laughter just at looking at you. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> it was like the first the first impulse was embarrassment. But then there was something else that came in like, actually, this is good. We can own this. And now it's comedy. <laughs> yes, and exactly. I think that, was, that was a light bulb. Like, actually, this is you can turn this into a powerful position rather than an embarrassing position. Wow. I feel like that was the first um, comedic moment. <laughs> and then I'm fast forwarding to you in, in some of the crazy costumes and props you have in Gimlick and stuff. And <laughs> it's that's amazing. I, I love hearing that because it it just shows um, uh, in paired with everything how you get here today and how how it all evolves. Do you have some other influences like uh, some of the greats who who stick up in your mind? Sure. Oh, I love anything that Tina Fey has ever done and Amy Poehler. You know, those women are such role models for female comedians um, and sketch. I mean, not even just female. They're just Improv. so hard. Improv. Yeah, yeah. Writing. And they both, exactly. They both, they both went through I.O., Second City, and then wrote for SNL and performed on SNL. So true ro role models there. Um and yeah, I mean, a lot of those SNL uh, SNL writers and comedians have yeah. been influenced, influential. Um, trying to think of some other um, uh, name names can uh, escape me. Yeah, <laughs> those two lot. right there. There's so much there, and I can see a lot mm -hmm. of your your humor, you know, and, and the inspiration on the, from those two, they're, they're so good. Nothing, Amy Poehler's facial expressions throughout the years and SNL and, and also with Parks and Rec, I love so much. And then Tina Fey writing Mean Girls and going on. Her book is also so great. I, I really love her book. It's, these are some of the most talented people in comedy and, mm -hmm. Women in comedy, I think, have always had it a little bit harder back, you know, going going into the years. And I think that's changing. I, I, I hope I, I've had a, a lot on the show. Dana Marie is actually a stand up who's dealing with cancer and has incorporated it. She's amazing. She was yeah. at People's last year. On the yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so great. She was in. She's incredible. One of one of the leading in this area, and I just I love supporting and realizing that, like you know, it's all about us supporting each other, building a scene, and creating that feeling. Like you mentioned in New York City, you can go a bounce to bounce to a million different open mics. Here, we have to work a little harder and drive a little further, but we can still create that feeling of a collective. Yeah, and there is something cool about a comedy community. Uh, what I really appreciate about stand-up, improv's like this too, um, <clears throat> but I feel like improv communities, you can have a community just in one group. I mean, that's sort of, I'm sure, happenstance is its own community. Like, um, But with stand-up, where it is a solo practice, but... Uh, you get a community from everybody doing that solo practice. And I, I appreciate that it, it takes nothing, no resources to start it. You don't need to buy any tools, no paintbrushes, no, I don't know, make, engineering is necessary. Like anybody can do it. You don't and need a it, set. You don't need yeah, music. You don't need exactly. You don't need anything. So it's really cool to see all the different people that do it and that ne don't necessarily have a performing or um, certainly not a theater, even a film background. And you get to meet all these interesting people and get their perspectives because that's what it's all about in the end is like, what does this person have to say about the world or their experience? It's so important. I just read an article that the Pope is inviting hundred of famous mm -hmm. comedians to the Vatican. Yeah. Just, 
Isn't that awesome? And then you said <laughs> the role of the comedian is so important to create a new world and to really, I've always felt that the comedian is just a, such a, tr it's like a tribal thing of gathering around the fire pit and listening to a storyteller. I think it, it really has always resonated with me as an art form. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's true. That's right. That is funny. I saw that too. And it, it makes sense, but you never expect that from a, a Pope <laughs> to be, to be okay with some of the stuff that those comedians have said. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty progressive one. And, and, yeah. you know, I think trying to create that connection and, and invite people in. I think there's a connection between spirituality and creativity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's coming up a lot in my life. You know, if you're interested in that, to check out this book, The Artist's Way. Mm -hmm. I have it right here. And uh, I don't know if you ever have done this. So, yeah, Mia mentioned it in our last meeting, actually, as a way of a tool of writing. And I was like, yes, Queen, I've done yeah. it four times. <laughs> Cool. I love it. I do it every, you know, couple of months and I'm just like in between sessions, but it's a 12 week thing that try. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual path to higher creativity and mm -hmm. you, you really should start it every day. You start with a couple of pages, three pages. I didn't do them today and I, I I'm going to do them after this, this podcast, because mm -hmm. you got to crank some thoughts out just to see where you're at. And then these comedians, though, they put themselves, they do this in front of you. How vulnerable to diary in a microphone, you know, with a group of people. It's it's really commendable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've heard it's cool how the, the artist way has come up in so many different um, groups of creative people in my life. My husband happens to be a musician, a guitarist and songwriter. And he's got a copy, and I'm also in a a writing group that's not um, not comedy specific, like more I guess creative or just writing, <laughs> dramatic. Yeah. Writing. Um, and it's come up there, and then now it's coming up in this comedic uh, writing group. So it's cool how it can be applied to almost any discipline. Um, where you want to explore your, yeah, explore your own mind and uh, the creativity that it produces. Yeah, something's up there and it wants to come out. And I think it's so exciting to give yourself the platform to to talk, to create, to have conversations like this. It's really what it's all about. And, you know, the spiritual side of it, it, do you find yourself in thinking of it in those terms or do you have a spiritual side to yourself? Um, I do when I uh, indulge, <laughs> indulge in it. Um, I do fi feel like the past few years I've been kind of in a go, go, go. Um, I may have been neglecting some of my spiritual side, but um, yes, I well, I haven't, I haven't read The Artist's Way myself. It's just been recommended many times. So maybe this will inspire me to pick it up. And uh, I'm banging you over the head with it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, I think I do. Um, I, it might be time. I Actually, after Hill People and um, another project that will be happening in July, I, I've kind of purposely left a bit of open space. Um, That's and great. maybe maybe the torn space show, but I don't have to be like creatively a part of that. Um, and I am planning on doing some exploration, some 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 personal deep diving, because I think COVID forced a lot of us to do some of that work um, and look at our lives differently and question the choices we've been making and why are we doing this? Why am I in a job that I, so, sucks my soul and, and doesn't compensate me? Or why, why am I living in this city when really I would love to see more green around me? Um, or why am I in my hometown when I want to be in the middle of New York or whatever? Yeah. Um, it forced us to kind of, look at our lives again and I think now four years from the start from the from the shutdown press start <laughs> I think 
I mean, it's really, I'm seeing a lot of people in my life right now are going through super major changes, moving across the country, going through divorces, quitting jobs, starting new endeavors. And it really kind of feels like we're getting the ripple effect from all those major changes. So that's what I'm thinking, like, what's my major change? (laughs) What's going on with me? I think it is time for a a check in. Check in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. And and I hope that the Hill People Comedy Fest is huge success. And, you know, going forward, you're the sky is the limit for you. You're so talented and creative and, and really, I hope you get to shake hands with Tina and Amy someday and and tell them how much you love them. Really. I'm (laughs) praying for that for you. (laughs) Thank you. Oh my goodness. And likewise. um, uh, Yeah. Thank you. I, I hope that we are, we've, we've got some tickets to sell. So if you're listening to this and any of it sounds interesting, I hope you will come check it out. Um, but a lot of people, I think, are also, um, I think COVID has also changed the way that we approach commitments of any kind, like even just buying that ticket link, uh, even in the theater company touring space, it's like, wow, this is really not going to be a successful event. But then 48 hours beforehand, all the tickets get sold. So it's really changing our behavior. So anyway, I'm hoping that's the case this this time I too. hope so too. And <laughs> folks go, you got to do it. It's, it's such a fun event and i um, really excited about it. The Thursday is, as you hear, we're doing an improv comedy thing, 6 PM. And wow. then at 8 PM is going to be the stand up showcase. So a chance for you to jump in and try improv and we've got a really fun plan show a little gamey stuff. Anybody can come and do it. You don't have to be a performer. You don't have to want to be on stage you can just want to have some fun and play pretend come join us at 6 p.m then what do we got it going on friday if you want to give us a little weekend what's what did you put together this year because you should be very proud of yourself it looks like a really cool event thanks yes friday so yeah thursday's the local voices showcase plus mia jackson and um st- really kicking off the whole weekend is Happenstanceries Improv Workshop, which I'm really excited to to jam with you guys. Um, Friday, we have Sketch and Improv, hosted by Shay Troa, who does an amazing job with cabarets in the area and, and in the city. Um, she's just like a fabulous host. And uh, we'll have Gimlet Comedy doing some sketch. We'll have Hudson Valley Improv, who um, is a new intro for the festival and for me. I'm excited they're to great. see. It. That's great. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. Um, they're gonna do a set, and then Simple Town Sketch from New York. They're super funny. They've got quite a few viral videos now. Um, very funny sketch group. Um, ending the night on Friday, and then Saturday I'm doing a kids clowning workshop at, at 11 a.m. for all the kiddos recommended so cool. for like 11 and under. And um, our friend down the street, Emma Apicelli, is going to be doing face painting as well. So that's going to be fun. One person at a time can go get their face painted and then come back into the clown class. And then Aww. that night... <laughs> yeah. I want to see then, that picture of everybody at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, and then that night we have some more stand up hosted by Josh Fromer uh, with opener Dan Guerin from Al- the Albany area. And then Ethan Simmons Patrick uh, from New York, who's a regular at the Comedy Cellar and just a very funny guy. He's he's feels like a bit of a uh, an un- kind of a secret, <laughs> a bit of a best kept secret because he has almost no social media presence he's a bit of a rebel um but he's getting some attraction nice (laughs) off the grid yeah he's a bit off the grid which i think is kind of intriguing he's from iowa i want to say um and very funny so that'll be the capping off the whole weekend of events oh that's so incredible and where can go folks go to buy tickets Sure. Well, if you just search, do a Google search, uh, Hill People's Comedy Fest. Um, I I did a check yesterday and it is the first couple events. Otherwise, the the shortened link is bit.ly 
bit.ly slash HPCF 2024 ticks tix awesome and folks if you go click on the description of this whether it's you're on youtube spotify or apple we'll have links to everything and just wanted to say thank you so much your your husband you mentioned plays music what's what's his name drew as an arrow and his trio is far trio yes i follow them as well hope to check out their music sometime and Mm -hmm. i love that you guys are both creative and have different elements to you and how long have you been together 11 years <laughs> it's a long oh, term yeah that's yeah. awesome that's so sweet and it's so he's been alone for the whole ride of uh torn space and all this mm-hmm. stuff that you've done wow one last question because i just want to the family what's uh what about your do you have siblings sure yeah um I so I grew up in Wappingers, and yeah. my parents are still there. I have an older, I have two older sisters. Um, my sister Clara uh, lives in Beacon, and she's actually also she's a visual artist. My mother uh, is a visual artist, oh. so we always grew up with some creativity in the household. Um, and that's awesome. Yeah. So what kind of art does she do? Both of them. Right. My mother was, um, uh, drew, drew, like from childhood was always drawing. And then she got into paper making and print making. And she went to SUNY purchase and studied printmaking. And, um, and then as she got older, she started, she also always sewed and she would make dolls, these sock dolls, the most elaborate <laughs> toys you can imagine. She hand sewed, all of their dresses and outfits and like hand embroidered their faces. I mean, they were, they were really like soft. I think she called them soft sculptured dolls. They're like little sculptures. They're insane. Um, And then my sister Clara also does um, printmaking and she's also done some ceramics, but her main practice is printmaking. Oh, that's so cool. Talented. And then you, you have another sibling as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then my other sister Alicia's in in New York City, and she's um, she was always into she's the one picking up snakes and frogs and everything. So she studied environmental science, um, and is has kind of put that a little bit on hold while she raises two beautiful little girls. Uh, but I'm sure she's going to get back into it once she's got some more time. To Aunt Marissa. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I love being an aunt. It's very cool. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I love being uncle Joe and yeah. just wanted to ask you that stuff. Cause I know, like I said, for years to come, that's, this is who we're making it for, for, you know, our nieces and nephews. Mm-hmm. We're cre- leaving behind a legacy of comedy creation, using your voice for its highest good mm-hmm. and putting out laughter and joy into this world. Cause God knows we need it more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you for doing your part in uh, pr- yeah, elevating the voices of uh, friends in the community. I am so grateful to count myself as one of them. And I'm really excited to see you in this showcase this week. Yes, yeah. I'm going to have to tighten it down. And uh, I'm excited so much for this incredible endeavor and for all you're going to do. I love that you grew up with the three sisters and then you've got the Gimlick sisters Mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. and you i love everything you're doing can't wait to see what's next for you marissa and i just thank you so so much for being on joe's java jive episode 19 all right thank you i gotta go back in the archive and check out the other ones (laughs) check it all out you're you're in before we even have 20 and it's Mm -hmm. it's great so you're my last teen in the uh, in the show thanks marissa peace and love everybody and uh one last one any little phrase to live words to live by <laughs> i could have prepared <laughs> just lastly prepared. the meaning of life really quick and then we'll call Chris. Um, <laughs> try to be here now that's what i tell myself all the time just try to be here now yeah i love it let's do one big deep breath and then mm. end the podcast Mm -hmm. peace and love folks